Hey yo, hey yo, and welcome back to the letter. We are playing as Hannah Wright. We are no longer Isabel uh, Santos. And Rose is here. We get to see her again, our precious Rose. And uh, we're in a office talking to Rose with our crappy husband. I already forgot his name. And uh, we're discussing buying their Ermagerd mansion. I might as well, even if I'm having second thoughts about getting it for Luke. The moment we, the Wrights, have expressed interest in this place, we've had eyes set on us. If we don't buy it, that might as well be a signal to have busybodies gossip about how we may or may not have lost our fortune. Regardless of the fact, that is false. Image is everything when dealing with these people. These are the unspoken rules for people such as ourselves. And besides, I really did like the place. Why, everything here is absolutely wonderful. Ugh! Well, except for that ugly painting in the study. <laughs> that startled me. It looks like a bad fake of Edvard Munch painting. Here's the deal. I'm willing to pay 10% higher than your listing price. That's a lot. A lot, a lot. Like, super a lot. If anyone tries to outbid us, just add another <clears throat> 5%. I wish I had fuck you money. I doubt anyone can, of course. Or, you know what? Just add 15% to the listing price and we can sign all the paperwork now. I guess, if that's what you want, that won't be any trouble. I don't have all the papers now. Didn't think this would be a quick sell. I'll have copies sent to you so you can look over them. That smile. I'll miss that smile. And if you'd still like to finish the rest of the tour with Isabella's group, <clears throat> you're more than welcome to. No, I think we're good here. We'd appreciate a private tour of the place a lot more, I think. All right. Should I let Marianne in, then? Marianne? Oh, right, she's been waiting outside the study this whole time, hasn't she? I'll need to have a little chat with her to move this little mansion project forward. Please do. There's a look of apprehension when the woman enters the study. Yet, like a professional, I see the moment when she steals herself and masks her worry. Admirable. We have this project, then? Of course. Will you be needing anything from us? Having the floor plans would be a great start, just so that I can look at them beforehand. And if you could tell me when you're available for a meeting so that I can include it in my calendar? Oh, is a meeting really all that necessary, Marianne? A little bit. I guess we can send Johans to help you out. You two can <coughs> start by getting rid of this ugly painting. A hush falls upon the room at my request. What painting? And lo and behold, the painting is gone. In its place stands a mirror, which leads me to look at my own confused expression. Odd. Well, no matter. We've all been cursed. Back to the topic at hand. Marianne, dear, we are simply far too busy to meet up. Or perhaps I should question the need for a meeting, free up my schedule. I mean, it's- I would assume a meeting is pretty necessary, like, what are you so busy with throwing your parties? But, I guess we can free up a day to meet with you. I don't really need another maudlin Monday reading about Maury anyway. The book club can function without me for one day. What time shall we be seeing each other? How does lunch sound? Besides, my house has a higher priority over a book club. Why, we can hold the next meeting in this place. Surely the beauty and grandeur of it all will ins inspire spirited and lively debates about whether modern-day writers could match up with the classics. I might as well clear up the rest of my week to handle whatever affairs buying this mansion requires of me. Any social activity can be put off until the Ermagern, or rather, the Wrights mansion can debut. I'll... 
have my fill of great parties and gatherings, especially when I organize them myself. That sounds good. Although, with a project at this scope, we might need most of the day to tackle your concerns. A more thorough inspection of the place is also preferable. Breakfast, then. It's a date. <laughs> Breakfast. It's really not. All right. Monday. Ten o'clock sharp. We'll see you then. Actually, Marianne suggested that we meet at nine. But who's even awake at that unholy hour? I was lucky enough to wake up this morning before Luke went all the way to Card Cardiff. We say our goodbyes, shake hands, and make it clear without outright saying it that we now own this house. By the time we left the mansion grounds, sunset is almost upon us. So, you really want to buy this place then? That's a bit of a big impulse buy, even coming from you. <laughs> not that I'm complaining. Well, I'm glad you're not complaining like you usually do. It's a right and proper Christmas miracle, isn't it? Hannah has finally done something right. I refuse to look at him, staring at the passing scenery instead. Hey, Buttercup, what's with this cheek? Rose, Lily, Mint, the nerve, Luke, the nerve! That is our angry face. Is that what this is about? One, that woman's name was Rose. And two, you know I don't mean a word of that empty flirting. Then why flirt in the first place? And it's still the principle of things, Luke. I understand if you try to woo them to get what you want when it seems that I'm not looking. But I told you once before not to do it when I'm there. Luke dealt with other women in the past to get what he wanted. Sometimes I have my doubts. I really want to believe that what I am, that I am an exception, that he is not just using me like he used those other girls. I am having a hard time believing that now. And it isn't just the shameless flirting. There's something about that Marianne woman, as if Luke's familiar with her. As much as it shames me, it makes jealousy rear its ugly head. I am, suffice to say, ticked off. Really? I forfeit my trip to Cardiff for this, and you're still not happy. Oh, trust me, Luke. I am very happy. Very happy that, for once, we are doing something that I want. Can you not see the smile on my face? It's a lovely smile. It's only when I let loose those words that the truth hits me like a slap in the face. And by the looks of it, it seems to have the same effect on my dear, darling husband. It has always been, Luke wants to do this, and Luke wants to do that, hasn't it? I don't even remember the last trip we went to, which was of my own choosing without needing to get the man's approval. On the other hand, I was pulled along to every single expedition he wished to tackle, and I never objected. The rest of the ride home is spent ignoring each other, pretending the other didn't exist. Arriving to our penthouse, my first order of business is to get into bed. Forget a hot bath, forget the tea, I just want to bury myself in blankets and forget everything in my slumber. It seems Luke has the same idea in mind as he tags along behind me. But this is something I will not allow the moment I pass through the door. Out. What the bloody hell, woman? This is my bedroom, too! <laughs> he gets so high-pitched. Luke stands flabbergasted as I deny him entry to our chambers. His pillows lie on the cold, tiled floors, away from the warmth of our soft, down bed. And my gaze promises him the same fate if he does not budge on this matter. Don't even try to argue, because I am very cross with you, Luke Wright. You can take the second bedroom or the guest room if you wish. But I do not want to see you at all for the rest of the night. Johans! Our butler wanders over, a curious expression on his face. Very curious. He, does, he doesn't quite hurry, moving as at a relaxed place no matter how angry his master sounded. No, you are not allowed to sleep in my room, sir. 
<laughs> That's not what I mean. Help me talk some sense into her. There is no sense in questioning her right to be angry, sir. So, if I might be excused, I'll go prepare the second bedroom for you. <laughs> I have to keep a straight face as he stomps away in defeat. Mutiny! This is mutiny! <laughs> Why is your voice so crackly? Did you go to Prue Beauty? The system is being upturned, and the people are rioting, and everything is left asunder. You are a bit dramatic, sir. It isn't every day that Luke is rendered speechless by someone he considers inferior, or to yield to another's authority without an ulterior motive. His pride just won't allow it. I do keep telling the man to treat his people better. He may throw whatever fit he wants, but he will not be getting his way tonight. Are we going to see a ghost? Victorious, I celebrate by jumping face first into our bed. Undignified, yes, but nobody is here to judge me anyway. Right? Nobody is here to tell me what to do. Yet, as I succumb to sleep, I can hear them whisper to me. We have a trap door? <laughs> I can't tell what they're whispering. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Calling for me. They want me. Need me. They drown me, pull me down, and suffocate me in their embrace until I sink into the bottom. A deep abyss awaits inviting, yet foreboding. They're calling to me from in there, aren't they? And I do want to help, I do. But when I try to reach out, something pulls me back, like a hook sinking itself into my stomach. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I break through the surface with a gasp. Alone in bed, and without Luke to hog the covers. I am swathed in cloth, slicked with sweat. It takes me a while to untangle myself and kick them all off. Both the bed and I are a right mess by the end of it all, but I am more than eager to just get up and go out for some fresh air. October 26, Wednesday. The days pass had gone by a blur. We hadn't talked much, Luke and I, outside of necessity. In fact, we hardly talked beyond the topic of acquisitions of properties. Properties being the mansion, obviously. Everything has been so busy that I haven't talked to anyone outside of business, and it's just so stressing. So, one can understand my need for a good chat, preferably over a good meal. There are times when any decent, emotionally healthy, and socially capable person needs a good friend. One who will talk to them without the conversation, degrading or turning into an argument. Or barring a nearby friend, I have an interior designer under the confidentiality agreement to listen to me. Up higher! Come on now! <laughs> The place is bustling with movers, carrying furnishings here and there, along with several trunks of personal belongings taken from our penthouse. I can hear Luke barking at them in the other room, making sure nothing is handled carelessly or gets stolen. Careful now! I know your pictures are framed by cheap plastic, but those are framed by African blackwood and are one-of-a-kind commissioned paintings. Okay. Each one is easily worth a lifetime of what you not make! Yes, be rude to them. It's hard to tune him out. The walls did not do a good job of muffling him at all. But then again, it is Luke. I would still hear him ranting if even were the opposite side of the mansion. And I'm wearing earplugs. I'd really like to thank you for inviting me to breakfast, Mrs. Wright. But I already <laughs> ate, so I should really go back to work. But you wanted to... Uh, <laughs> Nonsense! You arrived so early, you must not have gotten a proper meal. Our butler has made a surprisingly lovely bubble and squeak. What? Sit. Sit! I'd <sighs> situate us in the dining hall, but it is a mess right now. What is bubble and squeak? Oh, you horns! <laughs> the man in question appears, ready with his tray as he starts to set the table for us. 
We sit in silence as we are each served a plate. Bubble and squeak, topped by a nicely poached egg with cherry tomatoes and other garnish adorning the edges of the plate. Is Bubble the drink? And squeak is... Is that like a potato? Or a hash brown? Like a thick hash brown? What the heck is that? A cup and saucer and a teapot with some Earl Grey is placed down for Marianne. And I ask for Orange Julius. How are you liking the project? Drop that vase and I'll have your head! I know it's only an 8 million yen vase, but I swear, I'll... Man. <laughs> well, it's certainly a fun challenge, incorporating the designs of a Jacobean manor and the functionality of a modern household. I have ideas I would like to suggest, by the way, about what to use the second bedroom for. I have been informed of your goddaughter and thought a kid-friendly room might be in order. You read my mind. I was actually going to bring that up. Oh, that would just be so lovely, Marianne. That way, Kylie can bring her friends over as well. And a good friend of mine, Rochelle, is expecting a baby. So, why don't we think about putting a crib in there, too? Who, how many people are living in this house? I can just imagine little ones running around. Filling this place with the pitta patta of their feet. Oh, she wants babies. We'd have to make sure they don't trip and fall on the stairs, though. We won't be able to finish everything up until after the party. But we'll have it ready by then, so that all we need to do is to move in the furnishings. Yes, that's plenty fine. It's not like we're in a hurry to have it. And we wouldn't want the workers to disturb the guests or the other way around, do we? Just make sure it's presentable. You know, in case a guest snoops about. Of course. As for the kitchen you wanted, I've already negotiated for the high-end stoves and the hot and cold drawers, so on and so forth. I've got a friend who was able to customize them so that they'll look like the counters we'll be replacing and fit the rest of the interior. They'll be bringing them in today. That sounds fancy. Why can't you people do anything right? Don't drag it. You'll scratch the wood. Excellent. But no, really, how have you liked it so far? Oh, it has been wonderful, believe me. Everything is going smoothly, too. It has been a long time since I've worked on something in this grand a scale. Nowadays, everyone is about condos and flats, living in the city where every room is an identical box. That probably would get boring. Believe me, this is very refreshing. We lived in a condo before this, Marianne. Oh. Uh, I didn't mean any insult. I... It's fine, sweetie. Look at you, all frazzled. I was just pulling your leg. <laughs> Luke wanted that penthouse when we got married, and you can thank him for purchasing this place as well. She looks confused. Of course, she has every right to be. She has no doubt overheard me push that estate agent into the sale, making quite the aggressive offer. She saw me sign the papers for the mansion as well. I just had to scoff. Don't be fooled. I'm just the treasury. I wouldn't be able to make a purchase this grand without his seal of approval. I see. That's it. That's all you have to say. Yes. It wouldn't be appropriate to comment further. It is unprofessional. Unprofessional? I can't help but let out a deep sigh as I stick a fork into the dish. I didn't want professional. I wanted someone who will either agree with me even if it's just for the sake of agreeing. Or someone who will try to talk some sense into me. Neutral responses are so boring. There is no discourse in the middle ground. The food is good. Best bubble and squeak. Of course it is. Our kitchen staff only uses the freshest hand-picked ingredients. Only the best for the rights. Mr. Wright is not joining us? No. He is far too busy bossing people around. He even refused to join me for breakfast earlier. Hence, this. I see. My apologies. I really don't know what sort of response you expect to get from me. <laughs> there is a clatter of silverware as I slam my hands on the table. It is frustrating. I am frustrated. At Luke, mostly. 
but Marianne's neutral, professional answers are certainly irksome as well. You're a human with feelings and opinions, aren't you? Don't give me this bollocks about being professional when we're having a nice, friendly chat over a nice and friendly breakfast. I can only talk about interior designs for so long, and I detest one-sided conversations, Marianne. But I, I really don't know what to say, Mrs. Wright. We were talking of no topic in particular, and... Luke. We were talking about Luke. About him not eating breakfast with you? About him treating me as if I were some treasury! I didn't realize that I shouted that out loud until it was too late. There's a stunned silence that settled before I slumped back into my seat. Hiding my face behind my hands, I can feel my shoulders shake. Breathe, I told myself. Calm down. But it's just so hard. Honestly, sometimes I feel like he doesn't love me anymore. Oh, have I been so blind? Did he ever love me at all? Was our marriage all for the sake of saving his company and his wealth? Probably. Because... Because? Did I say all that all out again? No, this is bad. Unacceptable. It has been rumored before the real reason of our engagement, but if anyone were to know of this... Marriages are a necessity to carry out political and financial power used to be a common thing. But the Evans Wright Union is the perfect happily ever after. Was supposed to be. It is true that we first met each other in order to discuss dealings to make the then fa failing Wright Enterprise a subsidiary for Evans Incorporated. But I do remember being in love with him, and there were times when he said he loved me back. Even if I'm not sure if what the truth is now. Either way, I do not want the right name or the Evans name dragged through the mud because of a slip-up. And if Mary Ann so much as talked of this, I wouldn't threaten her. Like, she seems like a professional... I don't think she'd go around, like, blabbing to people. Marianne is a good sort, isn't she? So far, she has been reasonable and accommodating even towards Luke's ridiculous requests. Patient and professional. Did it only extend to business? Or would she be able to understand that things like this are not as simple, not as clean as they are painted to be? Certainly, I can talk to her. Asked for her. I won't speak a word, Mrs. Wright. Not only am I contractually obliged to, it would also go against my principles. See, she's a nice lady. This is no one else's business but your own, and it should be kept between the two of you. And whoever you wish to seek counsel from. Please, Marianne. You have to understand. These sort of affairs. If anyone were to know this, they could just twist it and we'll be ruined. All I ask for is your silence on the matter. If I am to be frank, Mrs. Wright, this isn't new for me. You aren't the first and you certainly won't be the last to have complicated dealings. Unless what you're doing is illegal, I turn a blind eye. Can I trust her? <laughs> if I wasn't in the same boat, I'd be trying to pry those secrets and gossip with you about them by now. Well, I'm keeping that information confidential as well. It's not like I have any other choice, do I? Thank you. We continue to eat our meal in peace, finishing the last of the food and drink. When the door to the parlor opened, Marianne and I are just sitting in silence. Madam, the photographer from Luxury Living is here. I give him nothing but a small nod. This was a wonderful meal, Marianne. You're free to return to your duties. I must excuse myself. It was my pleasure. And thank you for the food as well. Thank you. Making my way downstairs, I look back and see Marianne give me a small... a nod and a small smile. That certainly put me in lighter spirits. An interview with Luxury Living. That is today, isn't it? Oh yes. 
people had caught wind of our new mansion the very moment we left the open house. Luke had boasted he could acquire the property in no time, and allowed a photo shoot for an interior design magazine to be scheduled today. Well, there were complications, and it took longer than it usually does for us. Hopefully, I won't have any other unfortunate slip-ups with someone who isn't bound by confidentiality. The mansion ground has been one of the first things to be fixed up, uh, aside from the bedroom. Although it is still a work in progress, I have a promising start, and I can already see flower patches. Luke flav Luke's flavored daffodils stand out easily, having been transplanted from the pots that used to litter the rooftops of our penthouse. Why, if the moving crew thought that Luke was being hot on them, they clearly didn't see the landscaper on his way out. The man looked like he was ready to faint, and Luke seemed ready to kill him by the end of their discussion. Oh, it's Zack! It is the gardens that I see him standing near the flowers, in quite admiration. He is hard to miss the hulk of a man that clearly did not belong, and the big backpack and suitcase he has with him makes him look much larger. It is a peculiar sight seeing someone who looks like he does handle little delicate things with such care. He looks up from the gardens and does a double take before a friendly face replaces his serene expression. Miss Wright, yeah? Hi, uh, Zachary Steele here from Luxury Living, ma'am. <laughs> Hope you weren't waiting too long. But it looks like you're still moving in, huh? Thought for a second there my calendar was wrong and I came here too early. The one and only. Ooh, is she interested? She blushing. Look at that blush. Is she interested? Ooh. Welcome, welcome to Maison de Right. And yes, we've been in the process of moving in as we were delayed. But it won't be a problem. They're just adding a few things here and there, and you should still be able to do your work. Where's the rest of your crew then, Mr. Steele? Zack is fine, please. Mr. Steele makes me feel like I'm a mascot for a cleaning product. <laughs> Mr. Clean. Anyway, I'll be your one-man crew for today. Don't worry, been doing this gig for a while now. You must be quite the veteran to handle this on your own. We've had a full crew coming into our penthouse the last time we were covered in your magazine. Veteran? Oh, you, your words are too kind, Miss Wright. Ooh, you blushing too, you blushing. Hana! If I get to call you Zack, you have my permission to call me Hana. I'm starting to like her a bit more. But, like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of digging this dynamic here, though. <laughs> Alrighty then. Anyway, I'm no veteran, but I know my camera well enough to make sure this is a good shoot. You can trust me on that, Miss Rat. Hana. Is Zack gonna see anything creepy? Zachary proves quickly enough that he can inf I can in fact trust him, his skills with a camera and experience in this industry, at the very least. He is kind and courteous, listening and following as I lead him around the house. A really nice fellow, and he treats our household staff well whenever we cross paths with them. I answer his questions to the best of my ability, and he is patient enough to answer mine whenever I get curious enough. For one, I ask what the bags are for. They are quite the magician's toolkit. From inside, he had procured several items to embellish the interior with. Bowls of fruit, lemons, trays with pepper mills, stacks of cookbooks, cutting boards, and glass canisters filled with colorful nuts and grains are brought in for the kitchen setting. For the bathroom, there are white towels, seashells, decorative soaps. There are other things as well, too numerous to count, all in that large backpack and suitcase. Tricks of the trade. Softens up a room, makes a place feel more homey, and fills it up with texture. But you guys probably have better stuff I can use for this. No lights. Don't tell me all of these are just props. Well, I've got my tripod here. For things like these, natural light is best. I'll just have to set the shutter speed to a real slow setting, and as long as nobody steps into the shot, it'll look great. Oh, it better. We go through the rooms one at a time, although 
We first hack the ones with the movers have no business in anymore. Ooh. The ballroom needs little preparation with this grand design. Although there is some trouble at first with the wide open space and the pictures being backlit. It is in the kitchen that Zachary's prop come in handy. Considering how Johanna's kept the place so neat and sterile, no one can practically one can practically eat off the floor. We carry on touring the house and taking pictures where we can, with the exception to the rooms which have yet to gain any purpose or design. Too bad I can't take a sneak peek at his photos yet. Funnily enough, he is using a traditional camera. I didn't even know film still existed. With the way he speaks, however, I can see that he knows enough about his craft that I'm not too worried or about botched photographs. I imagine photography must be cathartic for him, judging by how, by how at ease he looks while taking pictures. There are small snippets of conversation in between the clicking of the camera. He even goes as far to talk about these terminologies like shutter speeds and aperture when I ask about the technical aspects. I can't quite see the picture as it's made. Much like when I watch an artist paint on their canvas. But just watching someone passionately practicing their craft, such as this, is exciting in its own way. Going through the many rooms has been quite the exercise for the both of us. Oh! Why is she all glitchy? Despite that, he has been so nice and I find myself putting on my best smile. I think you like him. You wanna date him. <laughs> but it is as we're taking pictures in the foyer that everything comes to a standstill for a moment. Just a moment. Had I not been paying attention, I wouldn't have noticed. It's merely a split second when Zachary's rhythm is put to a halt. His finger doesn't move to release the shutter. Oh, weird that they're experiencing this together. <laughs> Yet he also doesn't pull the camera away from his face, gaze still firmly fixed through the viewfinder. His hands shake, and there is a light sheen of sweat on his forehead. Zachary? <laughs> no response. Zach, is something the matter? So does she not see it? Lowering his camera, he blinks and stares at something behind me before shaking his head. Turning around, I see nothing that could have gotten his attention. Oh, oh no, no, there, there, there's nothing wrong. I, I just remembered something that's all. Uh, let's get back to the pictures. Can you move a bit more to the left, yeah? I struggle to respond this time. There's a sudden weight on my back. An indescribable tightness around my throat, because you're being choked. Everything stops, and everything starts again, as I manage to choke out. If you're sure. I don't know what just happened. It... it was probably just a dizzy spell. I'm fine. And he said he's fine. We continue at the same pace as before, although there is an unspoken agreement that we will not talk about what happened. So, is this a full-time job for you then? Well, it seems I have reached my time limit and we'll have to have Zachary answer that question next time. In the next episode of The Letter. Dun dun dun. We're having a lot more spooky stuff happen, but I guess that's because they're actually in the mansion, and they're the ones that actually own the mansion, so she's probably madder at them than at Isabel. I wonder if Rose found the letter, too. I feel like she did. Because she didn't want to look at it when she grabbed it from Isabel. These are all mysteries we must find out <laughs> in the next episode.
But for now, thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe and ring the bell so you know when I post. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye!